Hi, and welcome to another Countycom One Take video. I have one opportunity to share with you the Bleeding Control Kit from Sam Medical. This is a really interesting product. Let me share a little background with you. Sam Medical has been in the medical business, seems like forever. Um, we, they make a tourniquet, the Sam uh, XT tourniquet. Awesome tourniquet. We have another video just focused on that. So take, take a look at that, you'll, you'll enjoy that. But this is a bleeding control kit that's got everything. It's, it's got the tourniquet, it's got a whole lot more. First of all, there's a couple of little things I'm obligated to tell you. Uh, I'm obligated to tell you, this is an informational video and not a substitute for proper training. So go get ble bleeding control, first aid, CPR, all that stuff. But advanced bleeding control is, is a hot topic now. Active shooter, hunting, Things have changed, and this is the kit to have. It's all in one package. When you get it from County Com, it comes in the tactical uh, low light. Because not everyone wants a big, bright package that says bleeding control on them. So it comes packed in this RPVC uh, package. But, you know, so only you know what it is. Once you open it, there's your bleeding control kit. Pops right out. That simple. What's in this bleeding control kit? everything you need for bleeding control. If you have a blister, if you need a Band-Aid, it's not here. You will be gravely disappointed. If you are a victim of a gunshot, knife wound, penetrating trauma, uh, chainsaw accident, this is for you. If you are a security officer, police officer, animal control officer, if you are doing any high-speed, low-drag stuff, this is exactly what you need. We've got the tourniquet, stops bleeding now. We have medical shears because you need to access the wound site and see what's going on. We have an emergency bandage. We're gonna see, we're gonna see that inside. This is an awesome piece. Um, the, the, you know, I know of it under another name, but wait till we get inside, we'll show that. Permanent marker, because we write on people, it's awesome. You know, if you apply the tourniquet, you need to write on the tourniquet the time you applied it. But, you know, I'll tell you a pro tip. The pro tip is we're going to write on the forehead, too. You bet. And I'll talk, we'll talk about that. We have compressed gauze. We'll talk about that. Medical gloves. You know, BSI is always important. Body substance isolation. You know, if it's you and your loved ones, hey, forget the gloves. You know, stop the bleed. But, you know, if it's, if it's somebody we don't know so well, hey, that's a terrific thing to have. An instruction card because, you know, when things go bad, you know what? Let's get back to basics. So this is coming in a vacuum sealed package. That's so it takes the minimum space possible. It's not going to run around. It's not going to, uh, you know, in your pack, in your car, in your glove compartment, under your truck seat. It's not going to get damaged. Vacuum sealed. Take the smallest room as possible. Okay, so you, when you throw this to your buddy or you pull it out, there is, you know, arrow here, this big line to tell you, hey, this is the top. You know, they give you a, a hole here. What's that hole for? That hole is so you can quickly figure out what is top, what is bottom, if you're dealing in the dark. If you're, if you're already bleeding, you may have an altered level of consciousness, so you need to keep it simple. So, hey, I've got a tab here, got a tab here, here. Uh, also, if you're bleeding out, your hands may be very slippery because you're in, dealing with blood. So these little tears make it really, really easy. So here we are, we're breaking, the, oh, heard that. Did you guys hear the, 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 uh, the vacuum seal break? Okay, so all we do, we pull across this tab. It's like opening potato chips, right? There we go. I did a very jagged job of that, right? So boom, we'll open that other side too. And what do we got going on inside here? Let us see. We open that up. Here's our stuff. You know what? If we need this stuff right now, what are we going to do? We know we're going to dump it right out on the ground. Wait, take time to read the instructions. No, we're guys. We don't read instructions, right? So here we go. Whew. Dump all that out of there. Bleeding control kit. Awesome. You know what? A little bit of tape. I can turn this into an occlusive chest seal and deal with a uh, chest injury. But that's not what this is all about. This is about bleeding control. So let's talk about bleeding control. Here, let's shoot. Let's go through this stuff. What do we got here? Oh, this is interesting. We'll talk about that. Compressed gauze. What are we going to do with compressed gauze? Okay. So let's go through the stuff that... Uh, Quick and easy, do I need to show you how to use a, sh uh, a marker? No, I do not. So this is on our tourniquet. 
In fact, let me grab a, well, well, we'll come to the tourniquet. When we put a tourniquet on, we're going to mark the time we applied it. There's a little white tag on the tourniquet. We'll talk about that. We're going to, we're going to put our time. Military time would be ideal. We'll put that on there. But I don't need to show you how to use a Sharpie, so I'm going to put that aside for now. Here's a set of gloves. Gloves are awesome, and they're nice packed. Uh, you know, I used to know the, yeah, so they're, they're, they're packed small. I'm going to put these aside. I don't need to show you how to use gloves, do I? No. Trauma shears. I want to assess the, these are the compact trauma shears. I want to assess the wound. I got to see it. Um, I want to see it. So um, shears are going to be great, So, but I don't need to show you how to use those. We're getting down to the good stuff here. I'm going to kick that out of the side. Here's instructions. You know what? If at this, if, if you're bleeding out, God, it's too late for instructions. But here they are anyway because maybe we won't be using it, but maybe somebody is. Somebody that's not for, as familiar with you and I, as you and I will be using it. Here's beautiful instructions for the SAM XT. Real simple. Big pictures because altered level of consciousness, you're bleeding out. And it talks about where to place tourniquets, you know. It also talks about junctional injuries. Junctional injuries. Okay, we're going to talk about junctional injuries. But I'm kicking the instructions out of the thing. i got three simple things to deal with here. Good, I need to keep it simple. So to stop the bleed, what are we going to do? Let's start with the, let's start with the SAM XT tourniquet. We have another video on how to apply the SAM XT. But we open it up, we pull it out. That's the first thing we're going to do. Here, boom. We have wonderful instructions. That's great. These are even smaller than that card. Um, not going to bore you with that. I'm going to kick that off to the side. So, boom, Sam, Sam XT opens up. That's great. I'm ready to put this on the bleed. Hey, look at this. I have this, <laughs> this came out of our, uh, our uh, bleeding control class. See, I have a wound to deal with here. You know what? Look at this. I have an entrance wound and an exit wound. Depending what protocol I'm going to follow, I'm going to put that tourniquet on. There's two, turn there's two protocols to follow. One protocol is high and tight. The other protocol is two to three inches above the wound. You know what? This is just a stump. So I'm going to just do the two to three inches above the wound to show you that. So our other video really talks about the, the uh, tourniquet. So I'm going to apply it quickly. And this is, you know, go look at our other video. But this is what we believe to be the finest tourniquet ever made. Um, finest one on the market yet. And this is why. It's this buckle. And it's, I tighten, 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 and click. Did you, you guys hear that click? These, these pins popped out. I take this tail, I wrap it around. Then I have my windlass. I tighten the windlass. And this thing, can you, you can see the, can you see the stump compressing? Yeah, it compresses. Good. Awesome. I put the, I went, put the windlass in here. I take this little tail. I kick the tail in there. This is my time and date stamp. I put that in here. Here's where I pull out my Sharpie. Boom, put, I put my time here, time applied. So this patient is going to be shocky because they've lost blood. We're gonna cover them up. Ideally, we leave the tourniquet exposed, right? We've stopped the bleeding, reassess it, make sure it's all locked in. Tourniquet's not gonna fly out. Go look at our tourniquet video for details. But here's the pro tip. We're going to leave this, this limb exposed so patient is on the gurney or tr being transported to the hospital for definitive care. We're going to leave the uh, limb exposed. But here's what happens in the real world is a medical person is going to walk by, see the limb exposed, know this patient's being treated for shock, and cover up the limb. Nobody's going to know there's a tourniquet on this patient until they uncover the patient. This is the cool part. We get to write on people. Take this Sharpie pro tip here. Write, a, write on the forehead, T, big T, and time of application. You know, T, 1430 hours. Or T, 1430. If you can get 1430, the guy's got a big forehead. But big T, 1430. Write it on, write it on the strip, which, you know, this guy's bleeding out. is going to be bloody and messy. Probably going to be missed. But forehead probably will stay clean. You know, even if he's pale, cool, diaphoretic, which is a nice way to say sweaty, you know, the, the, uh, the permanent marker is going to be fine on his head. You know what? He's going to be thanking you for it. The marker will come off with a little bit of alcohol, so don't worry about it. 
right on the guy's forehead. Pro tip. There you go. So good. We put the tourniquet on here. Great. We stopped the bleeding. That's terrific. What if we didn't? We t I talked, I said real quickly, junctional wound. What if there's a junctional wound? Oh, junctional wound. What does that mean? Uh, junctional wound. Junctional wound is a wound in an area like right here in the groin. I can't get the tourniquet up there, but I have an artery there, and I can't stop it. God, what are we going to do? Well, you know, modern bleeding control, here's our compressed gauze. Modern bleeding control says we are going to, and they, they do the same thing here. I don't need the trauma shears to open this. I have a, uh, um, I have a, I have a little ding there, a little ding there. You know, and, and again, these are things that you can feel. So that makes it low light, really easy. And look at this. I have compressed gauzes coming out. This is great. So our first, first step in, in bleeding control, get rid of that. We don't need that, right? That's not going to help me control bleeding. Our first step in bleeding control is to positive, put pressure there. You know, if this is a junctional wound in, a, in like the groin area, I can't put the tourniquet on there. It's too high, too low. Uh, you know, our first step is there. Oh, but I have an exit wound. That's not going to work out so well. This gauze can be used for packing a wound. As soon as it gets wet, it just all comes apart. But there it is, starting to come apart. You can see that. What do we do? This is not, a, here, I got to give you the disclaimer again. This is an informational video, not a substitute for proper training. We can wound pack with this. And this is something you need instruction on. But what we, we the, the, the short of it is, here's the, the, the quick class. We make a power ball, the power ball right there. And we are going to insert it into the wound. It's not pretty, it's not nice to do, but it's gonna save a life. What we're gonna try to do is occlude, there we go, power ball in. We're gonna try to occlude the uh, artery that's in there push it up against the bone and make it stop bleeding by putting in gauze. And look at that, it's, it's a nice warm hard block, which means I'm not fighting a big roll of gauze. You know, a big roll of gauze is gonna work just fine, but this lets me pull off exactly what I need, get in there, this is, you know, I'm, I'm packing a nine millimeter wound, which is a tough wound to pack because it is so very small. You know, sometimes they get confused as dog bites. I've, I've seen a nine millimeter wound that I thought was a dog bite. I said, what the heck was that? Was, uh, you know, entrance wound was very small. Exit wound on the other side was much bigger, but still. But anyway, so here we are. We pack this wound. We occlude the artery. Whew, bleeding is stopped. Got all this extra stuff. What do I do with that? Boom, put that right on top. Apply pressure. Good. Woo, that's good. We got to get our buddy out of here, don't we? Here is where we get, you know, our patient gets somebody to hold that for me. So somebody's going to hold that for me. This is the next product we're going to have. This is the emergency bandage. It's a cool, cool tool. So, you know, we, you know, we take care of anything else we have. You know what? If we've got two wounds, because this has an entrance wound. Like I said, I just packed the entrance wound. You know, we're always looking for the, where's that other hole? Where's that, uh, that exit wound? You know what? I can clip this off with the included shears. You know, I would leave a little pile on top. And there's my exit wound. Exit wound, much larger. This is a piece of cake to pack. In fact, you know what? Let's just do that. So, uh, you know, get, get you that, uh, that, oper that thing. I'm going to pull out a whole bunch more because I'm going to make a little ball on the top to pot put pressure there. So here I am again. Well, that was, that was ugly. Sorry about that. Get you back in space there. So here we go. Exit wound. Nice. This is going to be an easy one to pack. Again, I'm doing that power ball thing, right? This is going to give me a little ball right there next to the artery. I'm going to feel in. Oh, there we go. See, exit wound, much bigger, much easier to pack. So here I am trying to do it one-handed. This is really how we're going to do it. Is we're going to go finger over finger, real world stuff. You know, I'm going to pack, pack, pack. You know, we're going to stop that bleed. Okay, every drop of blood is sacred. You know, the, the more blood we lose, the harder our body has to work to compensate. We don't want that. So let's just say I've completely filled that, that void, that cavity, and leave whatever's on top, on top. Okay, talked about this emergency bandage. Here it is. This is what we're talking about. 
Again, look at this. You know, in real world, what am I going to do? You know, oh, hey, I got these tabs I can feel. You know, this is a slippery piece, though, I'll tell you that. But here we go. We're opening that up. Out comes the emergency bandage. Looks an awful lot like an Israeli bandage. I don't know. Uh, you know, very, very similar to an Israeli bandage without the little side clips. So I've got pressure here. I'm going to hold that. This is like an elastic bandage Look, with a with a parachute ripcord handle. What the heck is that about? Let me show you. So beautiful gauze pad right there up against the wound, right? Pressure, pressure, pressure. Yeah, I'm, here I am fumbling. I'm going to roll this guy over. I'm going to get this in here like that. Great. So this D handle is, is right in the middle of the pad. What is that all about? Here's what it is. I pull it nice and tight because I want pressure. This is a pressure bandage. I want pressure on that, um, on that pad that's right there. So I, I pull that through the D-ring just like that. Back I go. And it's kind of going to work like a one-way thing. One way uh, thing, it's going to let me tighten without loosening up. You can see that little spikes rip right into it. But what does that really do? Pressure. It puts, it, this, uh, this D-ring moves over, the base puts pressure right there on the wound. So that's what I need. And then I just finish this up. Around I go. It would be so much easier if it was a real person. Around we go. And I got this D-ring here. What I can do is I want, still want more pressure. You can do a flip. That's going to put, put all this pressure is going to go right here on this D-ring. Just like that. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Just like that. Come on. Okay. And there are, here, you know, that, that was interesting. You saw that. Uh, there's a little piece of tape here. Part of that's job, it's a, it's a little like rough Velcro tapey thing. Its job is so this thing doesn't spool out on me. Uh, while I'm applying it, I don't lose control and, you know, I have to go chase it down the hallway. Again, I can do pressure. I can just, or I can pressure by doing a twist there. I can just cover that up like that. But the big thing is I want pressure on this wound. I want to hold that gauze in place. You know, if I was able to occlude an artery, I want to stop it. So here is a picture of that anti-roll piece. So I had to pull that off there. That's good. Just like that. Pressure, no pressure. You know, twist, no twist. Pressure on the wound. That's what we're doing. Okay. Oh, good. So look, here's what I got. So when I am all done, how do I secure this thing? You know, I, this is the simplest thing ever. Genius. The guy that thought of this, genius. And that's probably why he's making a ton of money on this, right? I I, when I'm all done, I got this clip. I just clip to the layer below it. That's going to hold it in place. It's going to be that easy. Clip, clip, like that. Done. I have pressure on the wound. I've packed the wound. Uh, I have a, a tourniquet. Uh, you know, probably wouldn't, <laughs> probably wouldn't have both. But, you know, I was able to show you that, and hope you have, hopefully you had an, enough imagination to see exactly what we were doing. We got to uh, experience the uh, SAM Medical Bleeding Control Kit. So there's a couple of things I need to tell you about, and that is, you know, let me go back to the follow your local protocol, do, you know, whatever you're, you know, don't do th crazy stuff you're not trained to do. Uh, this is an informational video only. It is not a substitute for real world training. Get first aid, get CPR training, get b advanced bleeding control. This is all, you know, these are all important product or uh, uh, classes and training that will help you survive. So, in conclusion, uh, we think the uh, SAM XT is a superior tourniquet. The bleeding control kit is a one stop shop for everything you need for bleeding control. It's not going to help you with your boo boos, but it is going to save your life. So, you know, just, you know, you need to go out there and be safe. So remember, training preparation will help you save your life or someone else's. You know, uh, until next time, stay safe, be alert.